Hi, this is Bill Raymond, and this is part two of the two-part series on working with Microsoft Planner. Let's go ahead and get started. As you may recall from the previous video, we have a fictitious company who's launching a new product. This is the marketing department. So far, they've, created, they've got a few tasks here. Create a new brochure, create an in-store display, and they've got plan a trade event, which has already been done. So what we're gonna do is add a few more tasks here so that we can make use of this product a little bit more. As you can see, as you start adding more tasks, you start to run out of vertical space pretty quickly. So what you really wanna do when you're creating these tasks is think high level. What are the important things that you need to put on this page? For example, let's take a look at this update the website thing. Well, you know, there might be a whole bunch of things that we need to do on the website. So do we want to break those out as individual tasks or just assign them to the few people that are going to do the work and then put a few subtasks underneath it? So you can't actually do that. So let's go ahead and click on update the website and you'll find this checklist area here. Here's where you can start listing out the important deliverables for this task. For example, create a landing page. Add a pricing page. Create a features page, a product features page, and so on. As I, after I exit this, you can see now the card shows zero of three items are done. So this gives me a visual cue that there is a whole bunch of things that need to be done in order to finish this website, and that will give me the cue to open up the task. Now there are times when I really need to see what those tasks are. So let's go ahead and reopen this update the website task and you can see there's a show on card checkbox. I'll go ahead and exit this dialog and now you can see those tasks are listed. As you complete a task, it will actually finish and then disappear from the page and now you can see there's two tasks out of three that are completed. So there's only one left. And if I open up this task one more time, you can see they're still there, they're just crossed off. Some tasks will link off to other web pages. So for example, here's this train sales staff task. I'm gonna open this up and I wanna add a link. And this is gonna be our event page for the salespeople. So I'll type HTTPS sales event.com and just say sales event and click save. Now what's gonna happen is when I close this task, you'll see a link item here. And if I click on this, it'll open up the link. However, I'm gonna open up this task again, and I'm gonna add another link. This time I'm gonna add a YouTube video, and this is gonna be for customer testimonials. Because I know that the salespeople always ask for this video over the sales training, I'm gonna go ahead and show this on the card. And then I'm gonna click X. And you can see now, the customer testimonials link is right here. And there's this thing here that says there's two links. If I click on that, it opens up the card for the task. So this one, I can click on the link itself and it will open up a customer testimonial video. You might also wanna add imagery to your project as well. So for example, here's this design a logo task. I'm gonna open this up and I'll go ahead and attach a file. I'll choose this logo and click open. This will upload the image to the uh, site and then I'll go ahead and close this and you can see the logo displays here on your project. Now keep in mind, this does take up vertical space. We happen to be working on a smaller resolution so you can certainly put a lot more cards on your screen. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this over to completed because it's done. Another thing you can do with tasks is you can have conversations. So it's not really a threaded discussion per se, but you can add comments to the tasks. For example, um, sent copy to agency to do work. And you can just go ahead and post that and you'll see that there will be a discussion where the oldest item, which is where the task was originally created, starts and then the newest stuff bubbles up to the top. If I close this task, you can see now there's a little bubble here that says 
that there is a conversation going on. And so you can also just say spoke with agency and spoke with agency and said they will get started next week. Okay, and you can just go ahead and post that. So this is kind of like a little status update for the task that people can look at. Now let's talk about labels. Remember here this create a brochure task is being done by an outside agency. Well, maybe what we want to do is identify this task as being sort of outside of our organization. Someone's doing some work outside of our organization. So maybe we'll just go ahead and pick this green color here and we can say outside agency. Press enter. And then just come over here with the mouse and choose the green color. When I close this task, you can see there's a little green tab here now. Maybe the agency created this logo for us. Even though it's done, we can still set that color. And so this gives us a sense as to what tasks are being done by that outside agency. Now, keep in mind that there is only a limited set of colors that you can choose here. So what you want to do is really think about how you're going to use these colors. If you and your teams all use uh, Microsoft Planner, then you probably want to come up with a standard color scheme so you don't go to one project and the outside agency is green, yet another project with the outside agency being purple. So that's something you'll probably want to think about. Now I'm just going to walk you through a few other last minute details of the planner product. There's a whole lot more you can do here. For example, if you come over here to this group by area, this is showing progress, but I could just go to assigned to. And this is actually a really helpful feature because let's say I wanted to go ahead and take this trained sales staff and assign Bill Raymond to it. I can just drag and drop that over and now that task has been assigned to that person. Maybe this create an in-store display task should not be assigned. So I can go ahead and drag and move that over. If I come to the My Tasks section, then I should only see trained sales staff. When people are in their My Tasks section, notice that they may not be able to create tasks, but they can still move tasks around on their personal board. And that will always show up when you go back to the plan itself. If you want to get back to that original buckets display, just go over to progress and this will bring you to the default board. You will notice that if you come over here to the buckets area, you can create new buckets. However, they'll only be displayed in this area. So if you have some special buckets you want to put tasks in, you can do that in this screen. I'm going to head back over here to progress. One other thing you might want to do is hold a meeting for this project. And so you'll find notebook. But more importantly, there's this context menu here that says conversations, calendar, members, files, notebook. So here's what you can do. One thing that a lot of people don't realize with the planner product is really all you're doing is uh, you, in the background, all of the stuff being stored is just in a SharePoint site. So I'm just going to choose files here. And you can see that a new tab opened up and now we are inside of the new product launch SharePoint site. You created this by way of creating the plan itself. So here you can see there is that notebook area where you can use a OneNote notebook and you can take meeting notes uh, for your for whatever meetings that you happen to be in in your project and you can basically use that here online on the project. If you want to upload more files you can do that and you can also by just uploading documents you can see this logo too is here and that's because in one of the uh, tasks in Planner I had uploaded a logo and so that just got uploaded here to this particular area. So you can do a whole lot with this 
integration between SharePoint and Office 365's planner. To wrap things up, we're going to look at editing the project itself. So if we come up here to this context menu at the top of the page, there is a number of items down here at the bottom. One of them is edit plan. So if I click this, this allows me to rename the project. It allows me to update the description. And also it says, you know, do you want to remain this project to remain public? In other words, do you want other people in your organization to still be able to see it? If I chose no, then the people that could see it are only people that have been invited. I can also choose to send notifications. And then right here is the link to delete the plan. So if you do need to delete the plan, you can choose this option. Finally, you can choose add to favorites. So if I choose add to favorites, watch the left side of the screen where the new product launches in the bottom, in the middle left of the screen. I'm going to choose add to favorites and you can see that the new product launch jumped up to the favorite plans area. Normally you do this because you want quick access to the projects that you are focused on right now. When you're done and you want to remove that from favorites, just go back up to the plan again, to the context menu, and you can choose remove from favorites. And there you go. So this is a broad brush overview of using Microsoft Office Planner, and I hope you found it to be helpful. Well, thank you for watching this free video on YouTube. If you like it, I would really appreciate it if you press that subscribe button and the like button. It's incredibly helpful and it keeps the content free. Thanks and I'll catch you in another video.